All right, so in this lesson, in chapter 4.1, we're doing matrix operations. And in this entire chapter, we're going to be looking at what is a matrix. Now, a matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers that are put into rows and columns. Now, we have a definition of something called the dimension. And the dimension of a matrix is read row by column. Now, remember, rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. And so if we had this matrix here, the matrix A, that's what we will entitle the matrix. Whatever is in front, we can call it that. So we can have a matrix B or matrix C, or we can even define it by actual name. So in this matrix, what we want to do is get an understanding of dimensions. So here we see the dimension of this matrix is a 2 by 3. That's how you read it, 2 by 3. And so the reason why it's a 2 by 3, it's because of the whole statement of row by column. It has two rows. The first row is 6, 2, and negative 1, and the second row is negative 2, 0, 5, and then it has three columns. The first column is 6, negative 2, the second column is 2, 0, and the third column is negative 1, 5. Now, we also have something called the entries. Now, these are the assigned numbers in the matrix, and they can be identified by the row and column. You can even picture a traditional setting of a school where you have the desk by rows and columns, we can find where a student is located by which row they're in and which column they are in. Well, that's exactly what an entry is. And so what we do is we look at the row, right? So if I put the entry for this is in the second row and it's also in the third column, then which one is in the second row and third column is where they intersect, which would be five. Five is in the second row and in the third column. So if we just wanted to know what the dimensions of the matrices are, well, we can do that just simply by looking at the rows and columns. And we can write them in the cross product form. So that would mean that this first uh, one that we have here is a 3 by 3 matrix. It has three rows and three columns. The second one here, if you count the amount of rows it has, well, it has three rows there. But how many columns does it have? One, two, three, four, five. So that's a three by five matrix. Now it's very important that you can identify this so that when we get to matrix multiplication, we can do so effectively. This second matrix is a two by two. It has two rows and two columns. This one here, and it has one row there. One row, but how many columns does it have? One, two, three, four columns. So this is a one by four matrix. Now this one is looks a little bit similar and can be throws off some students, but as long as you remember row by column, row by column, you'll be fine. This has one, two, three, four rows and just one column. Okay, and so that's how you would say the dimension the dimensions in the matrix. Now, sometimes we have special names of matrices. So if you look at these matrices, pretty similar to what we saw before. That first one, we can just call that a row matrix, right? And those are very easy to see if you're going row by column. It has one row and there has three columns. It can have as many columns as, as you want. One by eight, one by ten. Anytime you have a one by something matrix, it's called a row matrix. A column matrix is when you have all columns and, and no rows. So here we see a three by one matrix. We can have a three by uh, a five by one, a ten by one, a thirteen by one. Anywhere where you have one column, uh, we call that a column matrix. Then we have a square matrix that could be anything, and this one is two by two. But you can also have a three by three, a four by four, a five by five. Anywhere you have the same amount of rows and same columns, we call that a square matrix. Then we have a zero matrix. The zero matrix just means every entry is a zero. And so because of this, these special names for certain matrices are based on their dimensions or their entries. And so zero matrix could just be zero, right? That's a zero matrix. Anything that have, has every entry being a zero. Now, what we want to do is just make sure we understand how to compare and equate matrices. Two matrices are equal. Number one, if their dimensions are the same, that's the first thing. And the second thing, their corresponding entries are equal. Now, as obvious as that is, what you really want to make sure is you understand the equivalencies of entries. So you see this one, this matrix is equal because the five is the same in the first entry, zeros are the same in the second entry. Here is written different, but you would just have to know that negative four divided by negative four is the same as negative one, and three quarters is the same as 7,500. Therefore, these are equal. 
This one is not equal because although they have the exact same numbers, they are not in the same order. So their entries are not the same. The first row, first column are the same here. The first row, second column is the same. But when you get to the second row, there's a switch. The second row, first column is not the same in this matrix as the second row, second column. They have been switched and therefore they are not equal, although they have the same digits within their entries. All right. Now, how we add the matrices is based off of the concept of what we just learned about dimensions and entries. To add them, all you need to do is make sure you have the same dimension and then add the corresponding entries. So if you look at this one here, we simply add the 5 with the negative 2, the negative 3 with the 1, and so forth, each corresponding entry with its other. And so what we see here is if we add them all up, we're going to get 3, negative 2, 0, 4, 4, and 4 as our answers. So simply to add them up, make sure that each corresponding entry goes with its pair, right? Negative 3 with the negative with the positive three there because they're both in the second row first column. When we subtract matrices it follows the same rules. We want to make sure that we subtract the corresponding entries and so six here this is the second row and the third column must subtract with the second row second column. Vice versa this number one here must subtract with that two because they're both in the third row and first column. And so if we were to write them all out, what we see is 9 subtract 4 and each corresponding entry written with it. And it's pretty simple, a simple subtraction there, and that would be our final answer. Can we see if these ones can be added or not? All you have to do is here say yes or no. Well, this one can. Yes, it can because they are both 2 by 2 matrices. And so each corresponding entry can be added. How about the second one? If you said no, you are correct. This one cannot be added because one of them is a 2 by 2 matrix. Where's the other one? Well, that has two rows and three columns. And because of that third uh, column, it cannot be properly added, right? You can see that the 2 and the 5 will add, but what will you add this 3 to? Cannot be done. How about this third one? Well, this one's kind of a yes and no. These first two, yes, they can be added, but the result of that cannot be added to the second one. We have a 2 by 1 and then another 2 by 1. But then Sally here, we have a 1 by 2. And therefore, they cannot be all added together, only the first two. All right, what about multiplying a matrix by a scalar? Well, first of all, what is a scalar? In matrix algebra, a real number is called a scalar. Now, to multiply a matrix by a scalar, you simply multiply each entry in the matrix by that scalar. Think of it as just simply a regular multiplication. And so basically this negative 4 gets multiplied into every single entry. And so here we see that result and our final answer is written here. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and so forth. Right? Now we can sometimes combine them together. And so here if we multiply each of those matrices together. So here if we multiply uh, the scalar into each matrix you see that we would get for the first one. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. And 3 times 4 is 12. So then we get our first matrix. But then, depending on how we want to do this, we can leave the subtraction sign on the outside, or we can write a plus sign and bring the subtraction in. To save the confusion, we leave the subtraction sign out and only multiply the positive 2 inside. And so if we do that, we have positive 2 times 1 is 2. Positive 2 times the negative 4 it would be negative 8. Positive 2 times the 5 is 10. Positive 2 times that negative 2 in the second row is negative 4. Positive 2 times the 5 is positive 10. And positive 2 times the 6 is 12. Because we left the subtraction on the outside, we just have to remember to subtract each one. 6, six subtract 2 is going to give us 4. And then following suit, 0 subtract negative 4. Well, that's 0 plus 4. It's going to give us 4. Negative 9 subtract a negative 8. That's going to be plus 8. So negative 9 plus 8 would give us negative 1. 3 subtract 10 would be negative 7. 15 subtract 10, well that's going to give us 5. And then the 12 subtract 12, that will give us 0. Notice that we did each entry with its corresponding entry.